Hi everyone. All right, well, we're back. Um, it's been a little while, and I'm, um, but I'm back and I have another cocktail, and actually I have a very special cocktail for us today. Um, it's a French, uh, it's a twist on a French 75, and yes, a French 75 um, dates from the First World War, World War and um, it was reminiscent of the, um, 70, the French 75 millimeter field gun. So it said that as soon as you had this drink, it was like a pow, like the gun had hit you. But this is not why I like it. I like it because I like uh, bubbles and gin and I like it. So and today is actually very special. I created this, I mean, I'm having fun with cocktails. You can follow me if you want to have fun, if you want to try the recipes. But um, this one actually is uh, has a special name. So it's the Beth Midler cocktail. And yes, you go Beth Midler, the singer. Yeah, the singer, actor, everything. She's lovely. She's amazing. So the story dates back from a long time ago. There was a movie uh, with Kevin Bacon. It was like six degrees of separation. and. Honestly, I don't remember. I was young. There was like the six degrees of separation that were all six degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon, the actor. Well, I've always said, you know, we used to, to do jokes and, and I'm two degrees from blah, blah, blah. Well, I always said that I'm one degree away from Beth Midler because of my friend Sue Lawless. And Sue, actually, um, if you don't know the story, just go back to the cocktail. It's a Sue Lawless martini. Love it. Made it the other day, amazing. And I almost have no more vodka, so I just have to go buy more. So this time I have a, a fun story. Um, so my friend Sue and I, we talk a lot and I ask her like, tell me about stories. Like I love biographies. I don't like to read, I know. Um, but I love biographies, mostly artist biographies and um, and uh, so I asked Sue, you know, oh, tell me about this, tell me about that. But I knew she knew uh, Beth Midler. So I asked her, and actually, this is going to be a longish um, video because I'm going to read you what she wrote. So you can have a little glimpse of the uh, late 60s when they actually met, and you'll see the story is really amazing. So she wrote, ah, oh, Beth Midler. Ted and I first met Bet. Ted and her were an act. They, they, were, uh, they were very good friends. Not a couple, but they were very good friends. So I continue. Ted and I first met Bet during the period just before she got famous for singing at the Gay Bats at the old hotel in Sonia on the Upper West Side. He and I were playing clubs in the village, and it turned out she, so was she after the show around 1968. We had talked to one of the club owners, walked down into it on 8th Street to letting us having a spot so we could show a friend of mine who was a TV producer out in LA. It was kind of like an open mic night like now. So we did it and it was a two show appearance so we had to hang around. Ted went to the bathroom and of course got stopped at the bar with some friends. I was at our table and the next act was introduced and it was Beth. She always dressed retro, bought all her clothes at a secondhand shop. Ted gets uh, stuck at the bar so has, as not to interrupt her by returning to a seat. And so there we were. Well, she started to sing and I fell in love with her. It just so happened that the, at the exact same time, Ted and I, um, we might like to tour, thought that we might like to tour and we're looking for a singer to share an evening, fill it out. So Ted comes back, not really having heard her, and we three talk. Now she's already on Broadway, but she really wants to be a star. She didn't sing again that night, claiming work next day. We talked, and Ted said, let's follow up and see what happens. Nothing did, mainly because I'm certain other people had scoped her by now, and she was clearly ambitious and ready to do anything. She did ask us uh, who was handling us, so we introduced her to our manager and he took her on. And so we all became friends. I was living with a guy at the time and we would invite her over for dinner and I swear she had the biggest appetite. 
Anyway, at the same time, Ted and I um, had gotten hired for another off-Broadway show at the Cherry Lane, and guess who was the musical director? This pimpled, skinny, very full of himself New York kid, and so the three of us got to be friends, and it was Barry Manilow. I think he was about 20 at the time. At the same time, Beth was looking for a new accompanist, and so the rest is history. She was the one who got him to sing, they formed an act, and their careers took off. Ted went on the road with a show called Promises, Promises, and I married less and had a child. Barry and Beth went to Hollywood, and they became Californians, independently major recording stars. She brought her first big show to Broadway, and probably because we didn't have any money, we didn't go. I was also shy about seeing her again because it was probably eight or so years later. I think Ted and I had tried to reach her when we were in LA to do a TV pilot with Bernadette Peters. Bet I think was on tour. So this is a little glimpse of a biography. Ain't that amazing? So I'm one degree from all of these people. I'm just very, very proud to have friends like Sue Lawless. But now let's talk. So it is an amazing cocktail. It's a French 75. French 75 is gin, lime or lemon, uh, simple syrup and champagne. So, but because I like to create and do a twist and do this, I decided to actually change it up a little bit. So first of all, I made a rose simple syrup. So I'm sure you've seen these bottles in stores. It's rose water. So I actually took two cups of rose water with a cup and three quarters of sugar, boiled it and let it aside and it created this beautiful simple syrup rose flavor. It's really amazing. Then in the cocktail, so let's start building. Oh yes, and because Bed Midler is no ordinary person, I can't just buy sparkle wine. So I bought a little bottle of Vifrico, which is my favorite champagne, to actually do this cocktail right. So here we go. Let's start. So first of all, we are going to put a little bit of orange bitters, just a couple of dash in it. The orange, because when I started getting to know Beth through her music, she had beautiful orange hair. And I think, why not? So we go, a couple of dash, that's it, not more. Then here we have a beautiful Canadian gin called Empress 1908 that is created with pea blossom flowers. And of course, it'll change a little bit of color when we add citrus. So I'm gonna put one ounce. And then I want, switch this, and I want to put half an, half an ounce of lime juice. I prefer lime to lemon. And as you see, my blue gin became pink. Magic. And then I put half an ounce, or just a little bit under, of the rose simple syrup. Then we put a little bit of ice. I'm still here. And the reason why I shake it is because um, we put it in a glass, in a champagne glass, and there's no ice in it. So you really need that to be really cold. So here we go. I love this sound. All right, here we go. Ain't this a beautiful color? And now let's open this bubble, this bottle of joy. I don't know why I like champagne so much. I was an artist, I always, was on a beer budget, but I always like champagne. Now, I can afford some, not all the time though, but there we go. Magic sound. And you just top it off with some champagne. Let's not make a mess. Because <laughs> we know my reputation. And just a little garnish, not to do the lemon or the lime, the usual, let's do a little bit of an orange twist. 
to keep the theme of her beautiful orange hair. She's blonde now, but that's fine. There you go. This is the Bette Midler cocktail. For Bette Midler, who I don't know, whom I don't know, who I don't know, and but to my friend Sue again, and hopefully one day, maybe Bette will see this, this, um, this video, and then we can actually go to LA and meet her, and I'll make a batch of cocktails. All right. Thank you, everybody. And Sue, big kiss to you and Beth Midler. Please continue being fabulous. Bye. Mm.